customer's teacup barrel in the lathe through the spindle through the gearbox with the muzzle just poking out of our six jaw independently adjustable chuck and we've introduced a piloted range rod which has removable pilots on the end and uh, you can replace those pilots so that you get a good friction fit in the bore and it's tapered along its length very very slightly as it's ground so when you introduce the pilot into the bore and you push the pilot forward it rides the bore and then when the tapered section comes in contact with the muzzle you've got two contact points in the bore which means that rod is absolutely parallel with the center line of the bore and then we put a dial indicator onto the range rod. And that measures in thousandths of an inch. And that measures in one thousandth of an inch increment what the run out, as you rotate the part by hand in the lathe, you can read the run out and see that. There is absolutely no run out, just to show I'm not cheating. We'll disengage and then re-engage the clock and rotate the part. So there is practically not a flicker on that gauge as we rotate. So we're right on the bore line. Now if the outside diameter of the barrel was con completely concentric with the bore in that, if the hull was absolutely in the middle of a piece of steel, then the outside of the barrel would have the same zero run out as we've just induced in the bore. However, factory rifles just aren't made that way. And by running the clock up to the outside diameter of the barrel, touching on the outside diameter of the barrel, we can now see the difference between the bore and the outside diameter of the barrel by rotating the chuck again you can see there's considerably more run out. This, this example is considerably better than a lot of factory guns. This is a Tika T3. Um, a lot of factory guns are considerably worse than this, but there is discernible run out between the outside diameter of the bore as profiled and the bore. So the hole is not mathematically in the middle of the piece of steel. That means when you cut the crown, if you cut it relative to the outside diameter of the barrel, whatever run out there is, diameter and the bore will be induced in the core in the in the crown and the crown will be cut eccentrically also the thread will be cut eccentrically which means the bullet will not go down the center of the moderator when the moderator is threaded onto the factory thread this varies from one manufacturer to another and I'm not going to be drawn on which ones are good and which ones are bad because um, oh, somebody will sue me somewhere but needless to say factory guns are not made as concentric as custom rifles but as long as the hole through the middle of the moderator is big enough to take uh, that error into account, then uh, usually it's all perfectly safe. Now, given that there is a little run out between the bore and the barrel, there's two operations that we would normally recommend. One is that we go in and we cut that shoulder at the back of the thread relief. So this shoulder here at the back of the thread relief determines how square the moderator sits. The thread just pulls the moderator back. This surface here, which is perpendicular to the axis of the barrel, this shoulder at the back of the thread here, needs to be recut to make sure that the moderator sits square. That helps to reduce any run out. And then, as we said earlier, we're gonna go in and we're gonna recut the crown itself. So we'll just set the tooling up and we'll show you recutting the shoulder at the back of the thread relief. On the freshly cut material we've put a proper thread relief in the back of the factory 18 by 1 thread which needs to be obviously be a minimum of one mil deep and so this will be 1.25 mil deep and then we've recut the back shoulder of the thread where when you screw the moderator on it butts up against this vertical surface at the back of the thread and it's critical that that is completely perpendicular to the bore so this surface just here just there needs to be completely perpendicular to the bore so we've recut that with the barrel dialed in as previously so we know that that back shoulder is exactly at 90 degrees to the bore line and then we're going to come in and we're going to touch on that crown and just tidy that crown up and here we've got the same pilot that we had on the range rod we've now fitted it to a crowning tool 
in what's called a floating reamer holder and this has bearings in it to allow it to uh, follow the rotation and uh, we're going to now introduce the pilot into the bore with a little oil and we're going to recut the crown and this doesn't need to be done under power we can do this by hand so we introduce the, the tool into the bore lock the tailstock of the lathe down and we can rotate the chuck by hand to gently recut the crown and you can feel as the tool cuts the top of the lands and then starts to cut the groove material so very gently by hand we can feel when the crown is recutting and we got to the point where it's running smoothly which means we've cut through the lands we've now cut the grooves and we can uh, stop and have a look we'll just blow that off and then we can have a look at that crown the new cut material the new cut crown which we know is a hundred percent concentric with the bore we haven't moved the barrel since it was dialed in so just recutting the crown makes sure that when the bullet exits the muzzle the donut of gas that comes around the base of the bullet and washes round the bullet on exit doesn't push the base of the bullet and make the bullet yaw at all so whether it's going through a sound moderator or whether it's going through free flight it's vital that that bullet doesn't yaw in flight the metal work um, we open up the barrel channel so that before we bed the barrel and the action we make sure that the barrel can free float in the barrel channel and that the barrel can be concentric in the barrel channel what we don't want to do is set the bedding up and then the barrel to be off to one side so first of all we're going to open up the barrel channel so that the barrel can rest at its natural position while the gun's bedding up and because all we do is we use a piece of cut off barrel and sandpaper. I didn't think it was necessary to show you how we sand a barrel channel because I think most of you will understand the concept of sanding. So we used 80 grit paper and we open up the barrel channel and we just keep checking the barrel action in the stock until we've got a good enough free float. And the free float we require, rather than trying to tell you what it is in measurements, two business cards. You need to be able to get two business cards between the side of the, the barrel and the stock in the barrel channel. Here we've got two ordinary conventional business cards and these need to run all the way up and down the barrel channel, around the barrel, between the metalwork and the woodwork so that your barrel will free flow even if you're shooting off a bipod, whether you're shooting off a bag, you won't get a point of impact shift uh, uh, depending on what surface you shoot from as long as you've got a good free flow and therefore the barrel can resonate at its natural pitch and uh, the barrel will shoot at its best. Here we've set the tinker stock up in the mill and we're now going to open up the bolt holes to 9 sixteenths to accept the aluminium pillars that we need to put into the stock prior to bedding so that when the rifle is bedded and you do the screws up you can't crush the wood of the stock um, in doing your your stock screws up tight so we're just going to go ahead and open up those bolt holes to accept the aluminium pillars back on the bench with the pillar holes opened up and then with the pillars in place we leave them just a little bit proud of the stock when we epoxy them in place so that we can finish them off flush with the bottom of the floor plate only once they're in place will we go on to bed the gun into the stock the aluminium pillars have now been marine tex bedded into the stock of the teaker and uh, now 
that the pillars become part of the stock, we can now go ahead and fully bed the action into the, into the stock, guaranteeing the free flow of the barrel in the barrel channel. The pillar bedding is now complete on the customer's Tika T3 stock and the aluminium pillars go all the way through and the rifle rests on the top of the pillars and the recoil lug sits into the recess on the bottom of the action. Now we're going to take the gun to the range and test it and see what kind of accuracy we get. So here's the customer's Tika T3 in its wooden stock um, we just got back from the range and um, we put our test telescope on there that's a Night Force NXS 8 to 32 power a little extreme for a deer stalker but we use one scope to test all of the rifles that we build and that's a Night Force um, it's never let us down and it gives us incredibly good resolution when we're testing rifles at 100 meters. So, as you'll remember, when we shot the rifle, when it first came to us, the rifle shot 1.09 inches, which is a dead deer every time out to 300 metres without any difficulty. And there's nothing the matter with that. That's perfectly acceptable factory rifle accuracy with factory ammunition. And uh, we've done the level one upgrade on this rifle, which involves recrowning the barrel, floating the barrel in the barrel channel, Marine Tech's pillar bedding the gun back into its stock. So once we've floated the barrel, we Marine Tech's the gun back into its original factory stock with aluminium pillars, and we tune the trigger. And doing those four things probably gives us the best improvement in factory rifle accuracy, such that we've now got the rifle shooting 493,000, so just under half an inch, same rifle, same shooter, same ammunition, same range, We've gone from a one inch group just over to a half inch group just under. And that's very typical of a level one upgrade with a fa good factory rifle with good ammunition.